In this video, you get to look over my shoulder as I mix front of house for a worship service on Sunday morning. I thought this would be a fun video to make for a few reasons. Number one, maybe you're considering getting a Behringer wing and you want to actually see and hear what it's like mixing on this console in a church environment. Secondly, maybe you're new to mixing for a worship service environment. And I think one of the best ways to learn is just look over someone's shoulder as they're actually mixing for a real live service. So I tried to capture this the best of my ability to simulate that. So you're gonna see overhead camera footage of the Behringer wing during our first service. You're also gonna see a video recording from our first service. This is kind of our test broadcast. It's a private live stream that we capture. So this wasn't actually broadcasted to a public audience, but it gives us a visual reference to know what's going on during the service as I mix. Most importantly, you're gonna hear the main mix from the Behringer wing. This is not our broadcast mix. This is the mix that I'm sending to the PA in the room. An important thing to keep in mind is that with this mix, you're not hearing the natural reverberations or the, the resonating of audio frequencies within the space. You're not hearing how that audio interacts with the, all the bodies in the room, all the congregant members. You're not hearing them singing as well. So it's going to sound probably a little bit drier than you would prefer and a little bit drier than our actual broadcast mix. But I wanted you to really hear exactly what I am doing on the Behringer Wing and get an idea of the quality of audio and the quality of a mix you can achieve with this console. If you're unfamiliar with the wing and the user interface, I wanna point a few things out just so you know what you are looking at. So the Behringer wing does have 40 stereo channels. You can navigate to those different layers here on the left, one through 16, 17 through 32, uh, and so on. You get to 40 channels total. And then we have our bus layer right here. If I click that button, it's gonna pull up our mix buses. What we do in our mix is we actually group all the vocals together. We apply some compression and some processing there. We group our drums together and then we group all of our instruments together. So we have kind of these sub mixes within the greater mix to help kind of balance out the different sections of instruments, vocals, and drums. So you might see me reference my bus master layer once in a while. Then we have custom user layers. So these are custom layers that we built just for optimizing our Sunday morning work Flow. I have it set up so that I really don't have to bounce around layers really at all through the entire service. I'm utilizing all of the real estate on this mixing console to the best of its ability. So on user one, this is where I hang out 99% of the time. You'll see here on the left, we got the red channels, the kick drum and the snare drum. If I need to go to other channels for my drums, we have the rest of the drum kit on user two or channels one through 12 up here. Then we have the orange channels here. This is our bass guitar and our bass drive. Next we have our keys channel. This is a stereo keys rig using the Sunday keys app. It's a brand new iPad app within beta. It's pretty exciting. And then we've got uh, acoustic guitar one, and then acoustic guitar two, and then electric guitar. Um, these are all color coded green. And then we have backing tracks. These are grouped together uh, with a DCA. So this one fader controls all of our backing tracks. In this case, we are only using one stereo channel of tracks. So then we have our vocalist on the far right. We have our lead vocalist, Aaron. He sings most of the songs. Then we have Kaylee. She leads one song. It's my wife. And then we have Paul. He's a background vocalist. So these are all the individual vocalists and instruments I need to control throughout the service. Then we move on to some of the, the bus and DCA controls for my right hand. So here we have our drum DCA, and we are sending our drums through a bus functioning as a subgroup. So we're you know adding some light group compression on the drums. And then we have another bus where we're sending the drums into called drum smash. This is a heavy exaggerated compression to make the drums have a little bit more punch to them, especially the kick and the snare. And then we have our DCA for all of our band. So all of our instruments uh, minus the drums go through this DCA. That's the green one. And then our yellow one, these are all the vocal mics go through this DCA. Next up, we have our drum reverb bus, and this is mostly for that snare drum to get that nice big epic snare sound. Then we have instrument reverb that I don't really have it up too high most of the time, only if there's like a solo instrumentalist. And then we have vocal plate. You'll see me adjust this quite often, and then you'll also see me adjust the vocal delay quite often. And then over here, I'm gonna be 
tapping the tempo of the vocal delay. On the far right, we have our ProPresenter computer. So this sends the bumper video music or the pre and post service music you'll see going into here. Then we have our wireless handheld mic for MCs or people who are doing a call to worship or announcements. And then we have our pastor's headset mic. Quick note about our pastor's mic. This was our associate pastor this Sunday. He preaches about once a quarter. And I forgot when he put his headset mic on that we needed to make sure the headset mic wasn't in his beard. So you'll see we get that problem fixed about two minutes into the sermon because it's a pretty obvious scratching noise that was going on. So quick tip, if that ever happens, just wait for your pastor to like get to a good breaking point, um, it, uh, like in between thoughts or sections of the sermon, uh, and then just interrupt them there. I know at our church, they're cool with us fixing that because they don't want the congregation, you know, suffering with some sort of unforeseen glitch uh, for, the, you know, the entirety of a 30 minute sermon. Up on the top left, you'll actually see I have my phone with a decibel meter. On the left here, this is the average reading. So we're really shooting for the low 90s, like 90, 91, 92. That's where the average reading is. The, uh, the middle number, that's like the actual like uh, peaking of, of the decibel readings throughout the service but you'll see for the most part, we keep that average reading between 90 to 93. I know that was quite a bit of context. Thanks for hanging in there. Hopefully that makes this video uh, more enjoyable for you as you know what I'm doing throughout the service. If you're brand new to mixing in a worship service environment, I do want you to check out our beginner's guide to church sound, link down below this video. Stand with me. Let's sing to him. Got joy in the strong. Got peace in the storm. Got strength in the battle. Won't fear anymore. I'm a child of heaven. My hope is secure. I've got joy because I've got Jesus. Sing with me. Yeah. Gave me beauty for ashes, turned my life around, broke my chains and now I'll dance on solid ground. All he's done to save me, I will raise my voice. I've got Jesus, so I've got Yeah, my debt has been paid. Then he said to the dry bones, rise up out of that grave. He has all of my worship, all the honor and praise. I've got joy because I've got Jesus. Yeah. Gave me beauty for ashes, turned my life around, broke my chain. Joy like a river running through my soul. Joy all around me, everywhere I go. Even in the desert, still it overflows. Oh, I've got joy. I've got joy. Joy never ending, cause he called my name. Every breath I breathe is a testament. Oh, hallelujah. 
Good morning, friends. How are you doing today? Welcome here on this Memorial Weekend. If you're visiting, my name is Alex. I'm one of the pastors here. Hey, it's just great to have you here. Uh, and what a pause just thinking about this weekend, thinking about Memorial Day coming up. Uh, we follow a faith. We're part of a community that believes uh, greater love has no one than he lays down his life for his friend. And there's something about times like this that make us reflect back on just who Jesus is and what he does for us and has done for us and is doing for us, which is quite extraordinary. On Memorial Day, we remember the fact that people uh, at all times in history have laid down their lives, different conflicts, different things. Maybe today our minds especially go to Texas to something very different, to the loss of lives there, and we try and make sense of those things, and we, we can't often. And so we're invited to pause and to contemplate trying to remember that part of Jesus and what he does isn't just his promise that he will lay down his life for his friends, isn't just his action in doing that. But part of it is contemplating on one day he says that I'll wipe away every tear, one day I will restore all joy, one day the world will at least make sense at some level. So we pause in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of remembering as we do on Memorial Weekend. And we remind ourselves that Jesus is the explanation for everything. And we're invited into that contemplation this morning. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. For just a moment, if you're a follower of Jesus, I'd just love to invite you into that space of thank you, of gratitude, of recognizing that he has been good to you that he is restoring this world. And in the moment of a week that maybe doesn't make a lot of sense, even feels senseless, we remember the goodness of Jesus. Jesus, in this moment, we choose to focus on you above all of the things that we see in front of us. We don't ask you for easy answers because you don't give them. But we ask you that you would help us to keep our eyes on you. We thank you for your goodness to us, your love for us. And as we sing these words, Christ be magnified. We ask that your name would be lifted up above all of the stuff of the world, above all of the things that have our attention. We ask that your name would be lifted up and where you are lifted up, things change. For those of us that come in with heavy burdens, we ask that you would lift those burdens. As we look to you, may we know joy in your presence, our magnified King. Amen.
utmost melody Every human heart its native cry Then hear one in the raptured air Praise me, sing Christ, be magnified Oh, Christ be
voices here, but Lord, we imagine the day when we will join with all of the angels to declare and to sing praise, and that the anthem of our voices will be a declaration to your goodness. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Church, it's been a while since we've recited the Apostles' Creed together, so I want to do that. This is a creed that helps us remember what we believe if we call ourselves followers of Jesus. This is sort of like, kind of like those hills to die on creed for us. And it's, it's also a little bit of a, a preamble to Baptism Sunday next week. We'll probably say this together again next week. But if you're interested in being baptized, this is what you're declaring to the world around you. I believe in these things. 
And there's, this, there's some beautiful lines in this. I believe in the resurrection of the body, not just the resurrection of Jesus' body. I believe that. But I also believe that I too will rise because of what he's accomplished. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. Can you, can you imagine? I remember when I first learned this creed. We said it in Bible college every single week in one particular class, and probably two months in, I just started to weep when I was, I believe in the forgiveness of sins? Really? Wow, what a gift. So let's recite this together. We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into the heavens and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh, that's some good stuff. Jesus, we're grateful. We do believe. I taught you this last week. Since he is calm and all is right When I feel your favor flood my life Even in the good I'll follow you Even in the good I'll follow you When that boat is tossed upon the wave When I wonder if you'll keep me safe Even in the storms I'll follow you, even in the storms I'll follow you. Sing it with me. And I believe everything that you say you are. I believe and I have seen your unchanging heart in the good things and in the hardest part. I believe and I See the wicked prospering when I feel I have no voice to sing. Even in the want, I'll follow you. Even in the want, I'll follow you. And I believe everything that you say. Bye. 
grateful that even in the hardest parts, you are faithful and you've proven it time and time again. It's you that we worship. Amen and amen. Church, why don't you turn to someone around you and welcome them this morning. Say hello. We fondly call this the shake and howdy. That's right. Let the rumble end. Just uh, calm yourselves. Well, good morning again. Um, I get to share with you just some of the wonderful things that are uh, happening at the moment. And, and Aaron touched on one. Uh, next week, we are doing baptisms. Why is that a big deal? I love the woo. Let's woo, woo baptisms. Um, Fundamental to this idea of following Jesus is this idea of, of life change, of transformation. Uh, and something about baptism is this wonderful just display to people around us of, you know, this, this happened to me. This was my experience. I have met this Jesus who died and now is alive. And that, just to remind ourselves, because sometimes we forget, is a pretty spectacular and unusual story. It's not one you encounter all the time. And so, so when we experience that, when we experience that in, uh, internal change, there's a celebration uh, that gets to happen. Uh, and baptism is this wonderful way that we, we get to display that. So we take water uh, and we dunk you in it. And depending on how much sin you did, we pull you back up after a certain period of time. Uh, no, we don't. We do. Everyone gets the same amount of time. Um, and so it's just something that we get to do that just is that beautiful display uh, to the world. So if you've never been baptized, if that's not a journey that you've taken, I would just invite you to seriously consider it today, to, to maybe have a conversation between you and the Jesus you are following. This is one of those things that he left us, right? He said to us, take communion, take this table that we come to regularly in remembrance of me and, and baptize those that start following me along with you. And so this is something we enter into joyfully. And so there's an online form you can fill out. Someone would love to get in contact with you, even though it's next week, Pentecost Sunday, it is not too late for you to literally jump into a baptism tank um, and, and just celebrate that with us. Uh, next week as well, as well as baptizing people, we're starting off our summer circle. So one of the things that we are just really passionate about here is providing connection, providing relationship. If you are here and you don't know anyone, we would love to help that change. And so next week, all throughout the gathering space outside, we'll have all of these different pop-up stands, people start circles, which are, are really designed just to be small gathering spots. Uh, just for you to be able to meet new people and engage in activities that you're passionate about. Uh, last year, we had a, a mountain biking circle. We had a bird watching circle. We had a spiritual health circle. We had so many different options. And this year, again, lots of different options for you to just wander around and say, that's an interest that I have. I, I know Aaron Little pushed for his disc golfing circle that he's starting. If you like throwing discs, and if you found that you don't have the natural talent to play regular golf like, like most of us do, then, then you disc golf away. You throw discs at random targets. But there's so many things, whatever you like, there's things uh, to get involved in. So next week, just wander around and, and get to know some people. Uh, as you're doing it. There are so many things that I could let you know about as always. Uh, this week, just coming up alone, we have a hymn sing uh, at some point coming up in the next couple of weeks. You can find out more details by signing up for our app and looking online. We have an event with uh, a guy called Jamie Winship that's going to be fantastic. You can go online and find out more details. If I listed everything, I would be here all day and we wouldn't get to hear Dan's perfectly crafted sermon that he's going to come share with us in a few moments. 
And then finally, just a little reminder, we're so thankful for the ways that so many of you give to this South community to help us keep giving to what we do all around the world. I, I was just going through some donation things. We're working out with some of the missionary partners we support, and, and I counted 29 just overseas alone without looking at the local ones. And so I just love being part of this community that really celebrates what it is to, to give to the world around it. And so thank you for partnering with that. We have giving boxes at the back. We have them online, and we'd love you to join us in that if you aren't already. I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to Listen to Dan's, again, beautiful message. Jesus, thank you that you're present here with us. Thank you for this community that is about transformation. Thank you for South and the ways over decades it has impacted the world around it. It has been this thing that if it disappeared, we would miss deeply. So God, I'm thankful for the people that make up South, whether new, whether old. Thank you that you're present with us as we sing songs about you and, and how you are magnified in the world around us. Thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you as we sit and we learn together. You are present with us. Continue to transform us. Continue to teach us what it is to live in the way of Jesus and the heart of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. That, that was good. That was good for the first time. That was very good. And on a Memorial Day weekend, I, I'm so glad you've all come out. Um, yeah, I hope this is as crafted as Alex is trusting. But um, I, I've enjoyed preparing for it. I will tell you that. And as I think of Memorial Day weekend, you know, this is, I love this weekend. It, it's kind of like a kickoff to summer. I love that. Uh, a time to remember, like, like Alex told us, just remembering those who have, uh, yeah, Pay the biggest price for our freedoms and uh, so that we can appreciate even something like this coming together. Um, I also think of, you know, a third way that I enjoy. And it's when I think of my citizenship in God's kingdom. And those people that have gone before uh, who have set the stage for us today. Uh, and, and we're going to be looking at a character that, that kind of fits that scope this morning. But also, I think one of our values here at South is what we call roots. Roots. You know, just our, our heritage and the roots that we go way back um, you know, I, I think just locally here at South, and, and this is probably just some, some family business that I'll share with you right now. We lost one of our local roots this week. And uh, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but Ann Cresswell passed away Friday night. Uh, she passed away at about 6.30. And I was talking to Julie, her daughter, <coughs> shortly after that. And uh, uh, Neil, her, uh, Ann's husband, passed away probably about a year before. And um, we had his service. And any of you that knew Neil and Ann, they were big sports people. And uh, I always loved it when Neil would ask me to go to a Bronco game with him. Or sometimes I got to go to an Avs game with him. And here it was Friday night about 6.30 when Ann passed away. And I was talking to Julie. And she said, well, you know, the thing that's wonderful is I know right now Ann is, my mom is seeing Jesus face to face. And she's also seeing Dad. And then she stopped and she said, well, wait a minute. Maybe Dad's saying, hold off until the Avs game is over. But then, <laughs> who knows? Uh, if you knew Neil, you'd understand that. Um, yes. Oh, it's in the beard. Is that like, that's what happens when you have a beard. Here, go ahead, Jake. Don't want to drive people nuts. Ooh. Thank you, Jake. Thank you very much. Very good, very good. Um, hey, this series that Alex has been doing, I've loved it, uh, looking at post-resurrection appearances. And so far, Alex has gone through 
these, these folks, Mary Magdalene, Clopas, Thomas, Peter. And uh, Mary Magdalene looking at the aspect of darkness that she was experiencing. Clopas and, and his companion who were walking on the road to Emmaus and the defeat that they felt. Thomas. Eight hours later. I, I've read Loving God and Born Again and numerous books I loved. But Colson has said, one of the most amazing proofs to him of the truth of the resurrection and the transforming power is the fact that the followers of Jesus followed through to their deaths. Let me read a little verse to you. And this happened after Jesus rose from the dead. It happened the day after. The guards had come back and they reported to the Jewish leaders, hey, there was an angel that came and rolled the stone away. And the Jewish leaders told the soldiers, no, no, no. You must say that Jesus' disciples came during the night while he was sleeping and they stole his body. And then a little words down, it says the story spread widely among the Jews and some still feel it, believe it to today. Chuck Colson said, there were seven of us in on this Watergate plot. And we had all the administration's power behind us. And we got together and we plotted what our story would be. And we all committed that we were going to tell that lie to cover up the lie, uh, to cover up Watergate. And he said, seven educated, strong men couldn't keep a secret for two weeks. He said, the resurrection is no secret. It is no lie. It is what joins us together, and century after century we've seen our people who have gone before us who have been willing to shed their own blood for the belief in Jesus Christ. I just want to remind you, Jesus met you in your unbelief. Jesus transformed you and gave you hope. Jesus has a calling on your life to use you in our culture. Not to complain about our culture, but to go in there and be salt and light. Jesus will empower you wherever he takes you. And I pray for each one of us that we will be faithful to the very end. Let's worship God in the prayer. Would you stand with me? We're just going to sing this third verse of this song. just reminds us of the resurrection. The story of the truth of the resurrection that transformed James. It's the same truth that transforms us. She walked through that doorway called death and how she is right now experiencing the full truth of God's glory. That is something we can all look forward to. But I challenge us. 
look forward to tomorrow. And with God's help, he will use us. He will use us to bring his truth into this world. Father, take us now. Keep working your work of transformation in our lives. Keep painting for us the visions of hope and of ways that we are worthy to be in your family. And Lord, may you alone be glorified. May you give us patience to be able to live in your timing. And may you give us the courage to be able to face whatever comes at us. We love you. We love you. Amen. Hey, have a great Memorial Day. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Hopefully for anybody wanting to learn how I mix, uh, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, now we have record of, of what my process is like during a worship service. If you would like my team to come alongside you and implement a mixing console like this in your worship ministry at your church and help you implement any other technology, help you grow your worship ministry, then check out worshipministryschool.com and apply for a free strategy session today. On that session, you'll learn more about our coaching and training program. We've got a whole e-learning platform with all sorts of courses, um, but more importantly, we can actually customize the training to your situation and help you hit specific goals. So go to worshipministryschool.com, click the link down below. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hit the thumbs up button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.